Step one, first thing you need to do is go over all objectives on the exam. So every CompTIA test has a list of objectives, pretty much all the stuff that's going to be covered on the exam. So you have to go over each objective to make sure that you feel comfortable with what's going to be covered on the actual test. So there's domains, whether it's A+, Net+, CAS+, uh, COISA+, or any other pluses that CompTIA has. There is objectives and a list of things that's going to be covered on the exam. You can actually go on to CompTIA's website and look at the things that's going to be covered on the actual test. Now, um, that's great. That's wonderful. Only thing that's a little bit of a drawback, it's really broad. So uh, the objectives may say wireless security. That could mean a thousand things, literally. But at least with the objectives, it gives you a little bit better insight on what's going to be actually on the exam, right? So instead of just taking a shot in the dark, like, uh... I hope that uh, everything's okay. I hope that everything works out right. You can actually go and look at the objectives on the exam. And another thing, just a small little tidbit of advice. I run into students a lot of times, hey man, I don't need to study because I work in the field. Hey man, I, I do this all the time, so I need to study. Bad idea. Maybe the worst idea ever. Don't do that. I teach this stuff, right? And even if, if um, CompTIA comes out with a new exam, Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna study just to make sure that I'm proficient in whatever the new stuff is. So don't, don't you know? Don't let your ego kill you on the exam. Number two, make sure that you come up with a study plan. Make sure that you're not just going in there just studying just arbitrary stuff. Just studying. Okay, I think this was gonna be on the test. I think this was gonna be on the test. No, you gotta actually look over the objectives and study those objectives. That's what's gonna be on the test. So the actual exam has a bunch of objectives, a bunch of things that's gonna be on the test, and some of the objectives may have a really big emphasis, some of the other things may not have really big emphasis. So I know a lot of people self-study, and there's nothing wrong with self-studying, but sometimes you may actually study a topic a little bit more um, in depth than you actually need to. Because sometimes when you run across a topic that you feel is difficult, or that you feel is hard to understand, you're like, oh, this got to be on the test because I don't know what's going on. I don't get this. And a lot of times it's not that way. But if you're looking for a more of a concise, this is what you need to know, this is what's going to be in the exam, you can actually enroll inside of a course, whether it's a college course, a boot camp, or head over to itmagicky.com and enroll in one of my courses. But whatever you do, just make sure that you have a plan as far as how you're going to attack the objectives on the exam. Number three, make sure that you take a lot of practice tests, a lot of practice tests. There are a multitude of tools, whether it's free, whether it's paid, you can hop on my practice test, you can hop on Udemy, you can uh, find exams on Google, but just make sure that you get comfortable with the exam format. There's going to be a lot of different question types on the actual exam. And a lot of times the questions is what actually trips people up. You may have the information, you may have worked in the field, but the way that they ask questions sometimes aren't straightforward. It's kind of hard to understand what they're actually asking and how they want you to actually answer the question. So I would say you got to drill practice tests as many as you can get, as many as you can uh, get your hands on. You can create them yourself. That's another thing that you can do from the objectives, the things that you feel that you suck at the things that you feel that you're not too good at, you can actually create your own practice exams, right? So just make sure that the practice exams are going over the objectives on the actual exam and it's actually hitting on what you're weak at. No point of creating a practice exam on stuff that you feel strong about, stuff that you can pass easy. Make sure the practice exam is tough enough and you know most likely or hopefully you're making it tough enough to where it can almost mirror the actual exam. All right, gang, so that's it. This video went over three easy steps you can take to pass your CompTIA exam. Other than that, I'm Rob. You can head over to itmagicky.com and enroll in the course. If you're watching this video on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. Other than that, I'll see you in class.